Nathan Cruz with Carlson Software, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use uh, Precision 3D Topo to uh, work with uh, very large uh, point clouds coming from uh, aerial drone uh, photogrammetry uh, surveys. And one of the uh, issues that that we do have with with these uh, files is that they can be quite large. So I'm going to just point out that this is a six and a half gigabyte uh, LAS file. So it's an uncompressed in LAZ format. It would be um, slightly smaller. Also point out that it has about 98.7 million points in it. So that's uh, that's a pretty large file. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to use a, a larger point thinning factor. And the one thing that I've, I've noticed is that using odd numbers, uh, you have a tendency not to pick up exactly on a, on a scan line and eliminate more points than you actually um, need to. But in this case, the goal is, is to get, get this reduction ultimately down to a million or less points so that we can create a tin surface from it because we're certainly not going to create a nice looking tin out of a uh, hundred million points essentially. So I'm going to go ahead and load this point cloud. Now we, we have a warning that that's basically says uh, we know that the peak load loading a hundred million uh, points can be really, really high. So we take a look at the, the memory that you have installed on your machine and the number of points that you're attempting to load. Now, and we will warn you if it exceeds that size. But in this case, I know that, um, and we have a we have about a 20% buffer um, in there. And in this case, I know it's going to be fine. Uh, another feature that we have is you notice that the um, projection coming in from the LAS file is um, in Mississippi, and I've got my current scenario um, set to Kentucky. And in this case, uh, I do want to go ahead and change uh, my projection, my, my current scenario projection, to ha just have it match the incoming point cloud. And this load will uh, generally take, for 100 million points, um, probably right around 90 seconds or so. Um, and, that's on a, and that's on a reasonably fast machine. So the machine specs that, that I'm doing this demo on, I've got two uh, SSD RAID um, disks um, that, that have a transfer rate of about uh, one gigabit uh, per second. So they're about 10 times faster than, than a mechanical hard drive. Uh, this machine's also a six core um, Intel Core i7 uh, running at about uh, four, four gigahertz. And we have 32 gigs of RAM. Okay, now we've loaded the point cloud. Like I said, it takes about a minute and a half. And we can see that this, uh, what was a 100 million points, has got an awful lot of. Um, houses in it because this is un unclassified uh, LIDAR files, uh, meaning that the ground uh, points, the trees and buildings have not been pre-identified by another piece of software. And so I'm going to show you how to use P3D to basically uh, eliminate all of these rooftops and all these cars and these uh, fence lines um, here pretty quickly. Um, so what I'm going to do is first I'm going to reduce, I'm going to select the point cloud just by clicking on it, and I'm going to go, and, and you notice the object commands that pop up, I'm going to go to the filter, and what I'm going to do, because I've got, oh, 1.6 million in here, so, so basically the bare ground filter takes longer to run, and so the more points you have, obviously, the longer it's going to take. And this is a 54 acre site. So 100 million points for 54 acres is um, uh, kind of overkill. So, but what we wanna do is we want to throw away all of the points that you really don't need and we wanna keep all the important points and create a survey accurate um, tin surface from that. So we can't do any 
you know, really quick estimations or really quick surface uh, techniques that um, uh, that other software uh, might do. Uh, our concern is is really maintaining uh, important points. Anyway, I'm I'm going to do a, uh, a a voxel approximate um, filter here uh, first, and what this does is essentially. I'll just remove about a half million points. And you notice the point cloud doesn't look a, a whole lot different because uh, we still have over a million points in here. But that was my goal, was to get it down to around a million points before we start doing the, uh, the bare ground on it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set these parameters. Now this window size is, is important because if you're trying to do trees and and vegetation, then essentially what the window size is, is that it'll go through this uh, this uh, rectangular window size, and basically it'll march along the the the, um, the point cloud using this window size to do the, each one of the analysis. And so, if you notice that these are houses and roofs, houses have a tendency to be quite large. So with trees, we can get away with something like. Um, a 10 foot window, five foot window, but with um, but with houses, you need to use a larger window size. Explain the window size, initial distance uh, and the maximum distance are, are and the slope value are uh, values in the algorithm. This maximum distance means um, how how far away <laughs> a non ground point, you know, how much higher it can be, uh, and still be considered a ground point. And so the lower you make this, obviously the um, the, the fewer um, bits of vegetation that you're going to pick up. But if you don't want to make it too low because uh, you could also lose um, things like um, like the top of a hill, uh, for example. So we don't we don't want to do that. And so what I'm going to do is is accept these parameters and I'm going to go ahead and hit the apply bare ground filter. And this process will take uh, approximately uh, four to five minutes. Only uh, four minutes. And we have removed uh, 300,784 non-ground points. So I'm going to click on OK. And we can examine the results. And we can see that the all the roofs appear to be pretty well gone. Um, Still see a little bit of an artifact one there, and I notice that there's a couple that are still floating around over in this area. You can kind of see them. Uh, since I have the coloration um, from uh, set to grayscale on on the cloud, it may, just makes it a little bit easier to see the the um, the high points in here. So I can see that I have what appears to be a car and a house. So. I'm going to end the filtering command. I'm just going to crop uh, or delete these points. I'm just going to delete these um, out. It's not really in the area of interest. So there we go. Uh, let's see. Everything else looks pretty reasonable. I think there's a little bit of something over here, but uh, one, one thing, uh, another filter that we can apply uh, is the outlier filter, and that is individual points that are pretty far from other clusters of points. And um, there's apparently quite a few of those here. So now what I'm going to do is take a look at our result. So you can see that essentially it's just taken out um, the houses. A lot of the uh, fence lines have been weeded out um, and now I think uh, we're also down to 619,000 uh, points, which is far more reasonable. So I'm going to go ahead and create a tin surface. Now we can just do a, a straight triangulation, but I prefer to use our site slight simplification only because it it'll produce a better result. So it holds important points, like I was saying, and it. Um, it, it fills in areas that that are, are blank in a in a much smarter, more efficient way, and then um, 
it eliminates uh, places where you have lots of extra points that you don't actually need if, if they're not changing much uh, in elevation. So it uses a lot of uh, averaging um, in order to do that. So it, it, it'll take a little bit longer to run, um, but the end result produces a really nice uh, tight surface that has a lot fewer triangles, which means it's easier to do other things with, um, like edit and uh, do volume calculations and, and uh, do design work. Okay, now our tin is finished. So I'm going to turn off the point cloud. And I'm going to pick a different ground texture so that you can see a little bit more detail. But on inspection, you can see uh, a couple of cul-de-sacs. Definitely make out where the roads are. You can make out where the building pads are as well. Uh, these really flat spots, these are, these are the areas where the rooftops were removed, essentially. And you can see that we're left with a uh, really nice uh, bare ground. And you could do things like uh, make a contour map. You can see, and you can see the road contours actually contour pretty nicely um, in, in uh, this particular example. So that is that. Uh, so starting with a 100 million point uh, cloud generated from uh, an aerial drone photogrammic survey. Uh, we, in about 15 minutes, we were able to go from 100 million points to a finished tin that in this case has 95,000 triangles in it and uh, has all of the non-ground points removed.